There's a lot of confusion out there about dimensions and what they are. The purpose of this video is to go over dimensions and separate the comic book influenced fiction from the physical and metaphysical reality. Now at the most basic level of human understanding you have the physical dimensions and the metaphysical dimensions, or dimensions of perceived reality. Since the way we understand and interpret the world around us can be influenced in so many ways through education, the mass media, etc., it becomes increasingly difficult for our perceived reality to be in total agreement with the actual reality. There's three sides to every story, right? Yours, mine, and the truth. We've all heard the cliché. The idea is that we each create our own version of reality based on how we have learned to perceive the world around us. We often distort reality either through inexperience or ingrained mental patterns which amount to nothing more than psychological limitations manifested from our inclination to believe only what we are comfortable with or what seems true to us. Think of your brain as a knowledge tree which has its roots founded in your perceived reality. The roots are basically your nervous system which receives input from your five senses. The sun or illumination is like your thought patterns and your knowledge tree will only grow new branches in the areas you study. But analogies only go so far. We are kind of like a tree in that our powers of understanding are limited by our powers of observation and perception. We only have five senses and not twenty-five. However, people are much different than trees in that we are conscious entities. It's almost as if a separate world exists inside of our own heads, which is a mirror image of the real world outside as we see it through our own distorted lens. And this is the essence of the metaphysical dimensions, which are basically entire worlds that exist within the conscious mind of cognizant beings. Now let's talk about the physical dimensions. In physics, we have a classification or rank of mathematical objects, which is based on their dimensionality or how they transform mathematically. We call these tensors. A tensor rank zero is a scalar, which is just a number, which is just a point on a number line which stretches from negative infinity to positive infinity, creating what we call a dimension. A scalar or a tensor rank zero is just a mathematical object which exists in a single dimension. When we add dimensions, our mathematical objects begin to transform differently. That is, basic mathematical rules such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division all change. A tensor rank 1 is a vector, which is a mathematical object that exists in two to three dimensions. A, the second dimension can effectively be thought of as a planar slice of the third dimension. But vector addition and subtraction are virtually identical to the rules of scalar addition and subtraction in that you just break them down into the parts and treat the x, y, and z components as separate, separate parts. However, vector multiplication and division rules are much more mathematically complex. But not as complex as when we get to the fourth dimension because we've run out of spatial dimensions and thus have to create multiverses. In order, and in order to model these we use uh, what's called a tensor rank 2 or a real a tensor. All, all the mathematical objects are tensors of different rank but we just refer to them as scalars, vectors. A tensor is, is this complex mathematical object which models things in fourth and higher dimensions, these so-called hyperdimensions, fourth and above. They're impossible to visualize in your head accurately because they are outside of the realm of physical manifestation, which is everything we observe in the third dimension. We live in the third dimension. Tensors of rank two and above are refer to all hyperdimensional mathematical objects, uh, none of which I will discuss further in fear of losing half my audience. What I will discuss are the paradoxical and philosophical consequences of the universe in which we exist and these dimensions. Your position in the fourth dimension is always now. The fourth dimension is time, which we can only look back into and not forward. And the only direction we can move in the fourth dimension is into the future. We can't move backward in time. This is because of how the fourth dimension is superposed on the complex plane with both real and imaginary parts through the act of conscious observation. When we open the box and take a look at Schrodinger's cat, that's quantum mechanics. You can study that a little bit more in detail to understand what I'm talking about here. But In the physical world, we can only move forward in time. Traveling back in time violates every known law of physics as well as creates all sort of paradoxes for a thought experiment, just thinking about going back in time. 
But in the metaphysical world, the world of a perceived reality, we can only observe the past and may use it to imagine or predict the future, but we can never actually observe the future until it happens. So we basically have the observed world and the real world, and they're separated into both their real and imaginary parts. Kind of cool. So you see the hyper dimensions are kind of like a bridge between the physical and the metaphysical. The hyper dimensions extend into complex space which has both real and imaginary components. Now let's talk a little bit about what this means mathematically. Einstein's equations of relativity point out that the speed of light is just a conversion factor, like meters to inches or pounds to kilograms, except that it converts a distance to a time. Basically you take the smallest distance possible and the shortest time possible, the quanta, and you set them both equal to one. Space and time actually connect at the quantum level. It's called Planck's constant, and you can set that equal to one as well, and it makes some interesting equations for quantum mechanics uh, that were found by Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac. You can look up Dirac's equations. He, he set all these quantum numbers equal to one, and that's how he came up with the theory of antiparticles and everything else. But in addition to the speed of light, uh, there is one more conversion factor involved in Einstein's equations for relativity which shows the mathematical relation between space and time between you know how the fourth dimension fits in and this is called i it's always italicized and i equals the square root of negative one now what this means and why it's important will become apparent in just a second hopefully in your school taught arithmetic you've always been told that you can't divide by zero and you can't take the square root of a negative number because the result you get when you try to do either of these things on a calculator or with your standard mathematics don't make any sense until you find a better way to analyze what is going on because we can't normally take the square root of a negative number but we can assume that the rules would be the same as it is for taking the square root of a positive number we create this imaginary number called i, and we say it's equal to the square root of negative 1. We tack this algebraic term on the side and carry on with our mathematics. So to take the square root of a negative number, we just take the square root of a number if it were positive and then multiply it by i, which is the square root of negative 1. However, some interesting things start to happen when you begin playing around with these imaginary numbers. In normal mathematics, any number multiplied by itself is always positive. But in our square root of negative 1 minus world, so to speak, uh, system of things are reversed. Because i times i equals negative 1. Anytime you multiply an imaginary number by itself or by another imaginary number, the result you get is always negative number. So, a complex number has both real and imaginary parts. Complex geometry is based on a real axis and an imaginary axis. The Mandelbrot set, which forms fractals, which are those complex mathematical objects, they're plotted on the complex plane, which, and in order to do this, they use a reciprocating function, which is chaotic in nature. But mathematicians have found that all chaotic functions so show higher order symmetries. Uh, sometimes you have to make 10 billion calculations before you begin to see a repetition, but nonetheless, all we, order will always emerge from chaos. Chaos itself is simply a manifestation of hyperdimensional order that appears random when viewed from a subdimension. So that's why it appears chaotic to us, because we can't immediately recognize its hyperdimensional patterning and order. And that, my friends, is where I will end this introduction to dimensions. Of course, at the end of all my videos, I have to tie it all in with aliens. So let's just talk about the possibilities, the possibility that these aliens are interdimensional beings. Now, I don't doubt that aliens have mastered physics and can bend space-time and whatnot. I've already proven that. But are they really us in the future, traveling back in time? Scientifically, I find it a billion times more likely that these are beings from somewhere else in the galaxy traveling here to visit us from somewhere else inside of our own universe. They didn't come from another multiverse. They didn't travel back in time. They didn't create... They, they would have... There's so many violations of the laws of physics and, and, and paradoxes that are created from traveling back in time. It's just... I can't possibly believe it or wrap my head around it or un understand it in any framework of anything that I've learned. So, as far as science, the science that I learned is concerned, these are not interdimensional beings, unless you're talking about the fact that they came from a completely different reality than we do. So, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to rate five stars and subscribe.